This is so important. It seems like nothing, it's everything. When you are identifying with what's going on, you are attaching your energy. You watch a scary movie and you get all caught up in the scary movie, you experience the thrills and chills. Why? Because your attention and you're identifying with what's going on, you have an energetic cord attaching you to what's going on on the screen. So now whatever happens on the screen happens to you. That's how that works. Okay, detachment, or it's just a boring movie, what happens now is your energy that was before attached to what was going on, and that's why you're upset, that's why you can't stop thinking, right? Boring movie, what happens is the energy, your energy, the, our most precious commodity, our energy, the Holy Ghost. When it's, a, when it's a boring movie, what happens is the energy actually returns to you. And that's why you're unaffected by what is going on. Because it's just a boring movie, you are detached. This is number one. Detachment is number one. Human beings have to learn how to do this. It's very simple. Pretend everything is a boring movie, okay? Easy. Now, once we pretend everything is a boring movie, we're not affected by what we're seeing and hearing because that's the point, to take you out of harmony, to take you out of balance, to make you scared, to make you afraid, to make you do things that you would never do if you were fully present and rational, agree to anything, right? Okay. So once we have detached, boring movie, your energy comes back to you. When your energy comes back to you, that's your power. Your energy is your power. Detachment is power. Back again with RJ Spina. And I've got to tell you, spiritual teacher, healer, author of Supercharged Self-Healing Book. He created the healing program called Ascending, Ascend the Frequencies Technique, which is really exciting. And teacher, the seven-step healing used to overcome his chest down paralysis. And, and this is huge because people that didn't see our first interview, um, can, can you tell them, just briefly share how you got here, how you arrived at this? Sure, yeah. So John, as a little kid, uh, I would naturally leave my body, what people call astral projection. So it was very normal for me to do that. In fact, that really was second nature. And so I knew from the very beginning that I was spirit or consciousness, and I never really developed an attachment or an identification to the body. And therefore I was never really limited to what I call body consciousness. So this is how I sort of came into this uh, incarnation. And I also had a memory because I used to say as a kid that if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. Now, the, the mechanics or the, the metaphysics of that didn't really reveal themselves until I became permanently, air quotes, permanently paralyzed from the chest down. But uh, I promise you, all this is planned. We all do this. I just happen to remember. And one way to really look at that is that my last name is Spina, which actually means spine. And so this uh, challenge I gave myself in order to force myself to wake up and really all of these memories of the metaphysics of self-healing and self-realization or enlightenment came back to me upon awakening from emergency surgery, which was about, believe it or not, now, now it's about six years ago. Wow, that's, that's a heck of a transformation. And it, it, you know what, it, it's, I've got a patient, um, that was born horribly deformed, half her brain, hemicephalic, what didn't form. And her mom took her to a psychic. And the psychic said, why did you choose to be born in a body that's so deformed? She said it was easier to transfer into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I mean, that's, that's goosebump stuff. Now, now you ended up healing uh, or discovering about healing. What, what do you, what's your concept? Like how healing works? Yeah, that, I mean, that's the question, right? So the, short, the shortest answer I could give, John, is the, it is the deconstruction of the false self. Now, when I say false self, you can think of ego, right? Uh, the shadow self, what I call the ego mind identity. And I go into great detail what the ego mind identity really is. And it's the human character that we create upon losing consciousness by coming all the way down, so to speak, dimensionally and frequentially. And then when we get here, we're essentially deaf, dumb, and blind. We don't know who we are, how we got here, what are we supposed to do? How does anything work, right? So 
instead of knowing or, and or remembering, we use beliefs and we create a story and we create a character based upon identifications with this belief, that belief, this role, that role. And so by identifying with everything other than what we really are, which really is pure spirit, and the body is just energy vibrating at a specific wavelength of frequencies, there's no solidity to this, even though I'm having a human experience too, and I understand that it seems solid and physical. It's not, it's just energy. So we create a character that takes us out of alignment of what we really are. And so by identifying with everything outside of ourselves, we've abdicated the control and the responsibility that we have for our own well being. And part of that well being is our own health. So as we return to the truth, it is only the truth that heals. And so by accessing, what I call our true self through very simple exercises, we start to deprogram the subconscious patterned egoic mind that is essentially filled with all lies. And that's what beliefs, concepts, and ideologies are, especially what passes for medicine today. None of that is actually healing. Beliefs are not healing. Thoughts are not healing. Meditation returns you to what you really are. So it's a step-by-step -step process of simply breaking down the false self returning to what you are, that state. And then from that state, that's the starting point. And then you could say from there, John, it's just a series of meditations that we can do that commands energy, channels energy, the same energy that we squander in thinking and emoting and doing all day long. You're simply going to use that same energy and pinpoint it directly to where it is that it needs to go in terms of healing and self-repair. And then by accessing higher states of consciousness, you're tapping into higher frequency energy, which is more powerful, more potent. Then you then command that energy and bring that in through your crown chakra and into your body. There are countless testimonials. Everyone who does this, it's immediate and tangible. You feel it. So healing is by returning to what is to, original to you, your true self, which is a supremely high vibration. All the disharmony within your body of energy and your physical body starts to self-repair and heal automatically because that low frequency disharmony can't exist in a high frequency environment. And when you return to what you are, it is the supreme vibration. It is the supreme frequency. And then self-healing and self-repair is immediately online. And then the exercises and the protocols in the book enhance the self-healing and uh, self-repair that our body already has. It increases it by an order of magnitude. And I'm just one example, maybe an extreme example, permanent paralysis, sepsis, hypothyroidism, type one diabetes, pancreatitis, thyroiditis. There's even more, I don't even remember anymore, but all of those things have been resolved. I certainly am not paralyzed. I walk around, I went for a jog today. Everyone can do this. They have been misprogrammed, utterly and completely misprogrammed. So we, we deconstruct all the, the false self, all the nonsense, that we've been told to believe in, which disempowers us. And we, we return to what we are through meditation. And that's actually how healing really works. A hundred percent. This is, this is what every doctor is got to incorporate. I mean, I'm working on a PowerPoint now for to teach doctors in China and Thailand and to break that mindset, even break the mindset of the patients. Oh, I have this disease. No, you, that's your adaptation. You don't have it. And, and I start conversations all the time with, well, you don't have high blood pressure and you don't have type two diabetes, but you do have stress and we're gonna get you healthy. You, you mentioned something um, about detoxification, but we're not talking food. And what do you mean? Like thoughts, energies, what do you mean by that? Yeah, John, this, okay. So most of us, right? The, the foundation of the ego mind identity, the human character that we create, the foundation of that is identification or misidentification with the body. We think that we are the body. So therefore everything is addressing the body, right? So when we think of, most people think of detoxification, they think of, okay, I'm gonna cut out salts, red meats, uh, fatty foods, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's good, that's good. That's incredibly limited, incredibly limited, okay? Because let me explain it this way. The order of creation, is desire, intention, thought, emotion, action, and behavior. By the time you address the body, we have left behind everything that led up to all of our actions, thought processes, and behaviors. So detoxification starts at the highest levels. So when we detoxify, we could say the mind, 
of impure thoughts, false beliefs, false concepts, that immediately trickles down into, into eventually our behavior. And so by addressing the mind, by detoxifying the mind of impure thoughts, false beliefs, false concepts, false doctrine, that you need something outside of yourself, that eventually what it does is it trickles down desire, intention, thought, emotion, action, and behavior. Once you work on this, the body it automatically starts to detoxify itself. You no longer reach out for these things because you're not stressed. You no longer emotionalize these things because you've purified your mind and your body of energy. Now you're not reaching out for things. The detoxification of food is the very last step. And I would say it's actually the least effective. Treating the body is the least effective thing. It's like when we have a, uh, a leak in the basement and it keeps flooding and we keep trying to clean out the basement. Yeah, but the leak is on the second floor. That's why treating the body doesn't work. Everything comes from mind, everything. Address the mind first. The body will automatically cleanse itself. You won't even reach for anything that is disharmonious. We are constantly inundating ourselves with low frequency information. We're on our phone 24 seven, we're watching the news. This stuff affects us. Absolutely, because we're identifying with what's going on. We're stressing ourselves out. Whatever we put our attention on becomes our reality. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. Now, the higher mind can actually see this energetic connection. We are constantly connecting with things that are completely disharmonious. The detoxification starts through meditation. Detox mind, body, spirit, not just the body. When you address the mind first, the body starts to take care of itself. And then in fact, cravings, which are just habits, will literally disappear. And now all of a sudden the body is getting what it needs because now it's in alignment with your true self. The body was designed to take direction from the cosmic body, the causal body. This body cannot handle, nor was it designed to take direction from the mental body. And this, this is part of the key of self-healing, John. Once we start to address the purification or the detoxification within the mental body, and actually even starts at the astral body, not to get too, too, too far out there for people, but it's still the truth. Once you address that, thoughts, emotions, actions, and behaviors automatically purify themselves. You don't reach for the cheeseburger and the fries and the milkshake anymore. You're vibrating in such a way that you have detoxified yourself at the core. The body will be the last place that it shows up. And it's also the last place that should be addressed because that's the physical, but the problem is always on the second floor or the third floor or the fourth floor. Nothing originates in the physical, absolutely nothing. And that's why there's nothing truly curative in this realm. So we have to address our core essence. So detoxification starts with impure thoughts, impure beliefs, impure concepts. And once you address that, the body automatically starts to heal itself. And, and that's one of the, every, every time I do a health talk, and I've done thousands of them, there's always five keys to health, nervous system, nutrition, sleep, exercise, prayer, and meditation. Mm -hmm. We're all sitting on a three-legged stool, physical, chemical, emotional stress. And if you master your emotions, you alter your physiology. And that's, and that I tell, I tell patients, you know, it doesn't matter how many exercises or adjustments you get, you have to address all three. You've got to, otherwise healing doesn't occur. It's interesting that we're living in a time now that uses chemicals to alter your physiology or to alter your response to the environment. And that's considered healthcare. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, a hundred years from now, they'll think, my God, really? Um, okay, that one of the we, uh, things we talked about last time is a magic trick, a pre pretending that you just arrived with no past, no future. I really like that. And, and can you explain that again? Yeah, okay. So the, what I have found, okay, is that all disharmony comes from disharmonious thought patterns, okay? And all thought is in context to an identification. You can't think without first having a belief. So humanity really needs to look at this, okay? And I realize this all comes from a higher state of consciousness, but when you're able to work in this way, you'll actually see these things, they're, they're tangible. So we have to eliminate those kind of things. So one of, the, one of the magic tricks in terms of instantaneous meditation, right, is 
Pretend you just arrived here, no past, no future. There is no longer a story you're telling yourself. That story that you tell yourself is the story of your ego mind. The ego mind is what puts you out of harmony. It's that simple. So by pretending that you just arrived here, no past, no future, it's instantaneous meditation. You are now fully present without effort. Okay, so anyone who is struggling, I can't meditate, I can't meditate, I can't med Meditation is our natural state. Okay, thinking is unnatural. Emoting is unnatural, believe it or not. It's become our default setting, but it's still unnatural. It throws us out of whack. Okay, there's a reason why meditation and fasting has been taught forever. There's a reason for that. It purifies mind, body, and spirit, right? So by pretending that you just arrived here, no past, no future, there's no story you tell yourself anymore. You're no longer putting yourself into further and further disharmony. That's the start. Start now. Start from the now. All your power is within the now. There is no power in past future. Humanity has placed itself in the construct of time. It has limited itself into time by thinking. It traps itself in time, John, by thinking. Thinking is past, future, past, future. When you learn to command your mind and be fully present all the time, you no longer have any limitations. There is no story that you're telling yourself, some human story. You start to realize what you really are. Consciousness, pure spirit, and it is unlimited. It is connected to everything. So that's one magic trick. Pretend you just arrived here. No past, no future. Instant meditation. Mind completely becomes clear. Emotional body completely becomes still. That's how healing starts. Parasympathetic state, this is how healing starts. It's from that starting point that we now build. We have a proper foundation, no more story, no more past future. And from there, we do the steps of the Ascend the Frequencies healing technique. There is no limitation to what we can do. I'm just one example, maybe an extreme example, but I'm just one example. I've helped, it's in the thousands at this point of people who couldn't get better. Because of the story, as you were just talking about, John, I have this, I have that, I'm it. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're untouched by all of that. Your spirit's not touched by body mind. Spirit comes first. Go to spirit first. Body mind will start to take care of itself. The, does the world need this now or does it need it now? <laughs> right? I, this, I, yeah. I, you know, it, teachers for, that, that are teaching the truth, have been teaching the same message over and over. I, re I remember reading about that concept, Be Here Now by Ram Dass. And this was you know, a decade or so ago, or a couple of decades. I, it, that, that, and when you look at the entire world right now, you could be saying, oh, the economy, the virus, the control, the this, that none of that's happening right now. You, know, you may be sitting in a chair, you may be sitting looking at the ocean, but if your thoughts go to that, it's going to suck you into the pit of hell and to realize that those are delusional concepts that, you know, it's, it's stuff you're making up inside of your mind. Uh, it, really it is. So when this, when this information, John, just to add to that, when, whatever is presented, whatever information is presented, whatever the next will be, whatever. Okay. Whenever that information is presented, it is our belief in it that makes it manifest. We have to start to understand metaphysics. Humanity is ready to work in this way, which is why I'm here and why I'm teaching it. Okay, if someone presents something and you believe in it, it becomes real. If someone presents something and you're detached from it and you don't believe in it, it has no effect on you. This is super important. We are so powerful that we keep creating a reality for ourselves that we don't really want because the reality that we're believing in is the one that is presented to us. We need to start to create our reality, not react to one. And the ego mind identity is a reactionary paradigm that believes what it, what it sees because it limited itself to body consciousness or five physical senses. So when we start to work in the way that myself and other teachers have talked about through detachment, through detoxification, none of this stuff touches you. It can't touch you. You become what you really are, invincible and immortal. And then you can start to work with your body any way that you see fit. And this is exactly what I've done with myself and helped other people. 
with 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 the the inundation of our brains with with social media friends interactions and this i mean literally psychosis you briefly mentioned the crown chakra um channeling energy this this would be a really cool tool i mean right now because i tell people thoughts fall like dominoes you know one thought hits another hits another and and those thoughts you know if they're on a certain pathway they'll suck you into the pit of hell um could could you discuss that technique a little bit more to get, just to give people watching this a tool they can use when you're when you're thinking economy food shortage this 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 okay you know while you're sitting in your chair or riding your bike okay. <laughs> you know how can you pull out once you recognize that you're on that that pathway of thought processes to hell okay the, the first thing and we'll, we'll get into channeling uh, intelligent energy into the crown chakra which is phenomenal and tangible immediately as soon as you start to do it okay one of the things I like to say, instead of getting sucked in, just as you were saying, John, identifying with everything that goes on, and that's what the ego does. It sees itself in everything. That's good. That's bad. That's right. That's wrong. This has to stop. That's just based on your subconscious pattern, egoic mind. Okay? It's subjective. It's nonsense, and, and it's beneath you. Okay. So if we start to imagine, it's a silly analogy, but it's, it's, uh, it's helpful. If we start to imagine everything is a boring movie. Now, we know when we watch a boring movie, we're just like, eh, kind of don't care, right? You're just watching it, and we don't, we're not into the story. We're not right in the roller coaster of whatever's going on in the, in the movie or the TV show. We literally just, we're just dispassionate. We have depersonalized, we have depersonalized that experience because we're just observing it. It's like a boring movie, eh, whatever. Okay, this is so important. It seems like nothing, it's everything. When you are identifying with what's going on, you are attaching your energy. You watch a scary movie and you get all caught up in the scary movie. You experience the thrills and chills. Why? Because your attention and you're identifying with what's going on. You have an energetic cord attaching you to what's going on on the screen. So now whatever happens on the screen happens to you. That's how that works. Okay. Detachment, or it's just a boring movie. What happens now is your energy that was before attached to what was going on, and that's why you're upset. That's why you can't stop thinking, right? Boring movie. What happens is the energy, your energy, the, our most precious commodity, our energy, the Holy Ghost. When it's, a, when it's a boring movie, what happens is the energy actually returns to you. And that's why you're unaffected by what is going on. Because it's just a boring movie. You are detached. This is number one. Detachment is number one. Human beings have to learn how to do this. It's very simple. Pretend everything is a boring movie. Okay, easy. Now, once we pretend everything is a boring movie, we're not affected by what we're seeing and hearing because that's the point to take you out of harmony, to take you out of balance, to make you scared, to make you afraid, to make you do things that you would never do if you were fully present and rational. Agree to anything, right? Okay. So once we have detached, boring movie, your energy comes back to you. When your energy comes back to you, that's your power. Your energy is your power. Detachment is power. Now, once you have all your power back, all you want to do is focus on the, the crown chakra. I'll try to give the briefest example for those who are not familiar with chakras. Chakras are energy transformers and energy metabolizers that exists within different frequencies. And they are, the, they are the only reason why there is form and function to our, to our physical being, our physical entity, okay? The energy comes in, the life force energy actually comes in through the chakra system. It is not food that does it, okay? It's the energy in the chakras. And any mystic master will tell you the exact same thing. And I'm not the only one that can actually see chakras. So we all have them and that's how the energy comes in. Now, the crown is key, John. It's key because the crown chakra is the highest chakra frequentially that is in association with the human form. So by opening up the crown chakra, which by the way, that's what enlightenment is. You see all those pictures of uh, saintly beings with that illuminated halo. That's the artist's rendition of a fully open crown chakra, by the way. That's where that comes from. And it's related to enlightenment or self-realization, which is the same thing. So by opening up your crown chakra, Okay, the energies that are existing in that frequency are far more powerful than the energies that are existing within your visual field, 
what you can hear, what you can smell, what you can taste. The crown chakra energy is powerful and potent. So what you want to do is, we all know what it's like when we have a baseball cap on and we, we take the hat off. You feel that, that pressure release, right? Okay. When you open your crown chakra properly, it's going to almost feel like someone is removing your skull cap, which I know sounds funny, but just think of a baseball cap. Okay. So when you open the crown chakra, and it's simple, I'll show us a, a chakra opening exercise. It's easy. This stuff is easy. If it was complicated, I wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. So all we do is we open up our crown chakra and then through intention, like a waterfall, we've all stood under a waterfall, have seen that, we actually command energy, healing energy to come right in through our account because it, it already does. You're now actually commanding it to come in. And that high frequency energy, you feel it instantaneously. It's like a, a, a bolt of energy starts to go through your body because it's high frequency energy that you're not used to commanding and working with. And as you bring in that energy, you simply direct it to wherever it is that you want to go. Your lungs, your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, it doesn't matter. Me, it was my spine, right? And, and some other organs. But you actually just bring that in and you can actually feel it. If you start to get good at this, you'll even start to see it. And all you have to do is imagine what it feels like. In the very beginning, because for most people, this is, they're certainly not taught this. Well, now they're being taught. They certainly haven't been taught this, right? So they're like, I don't, I don't know. What should I see? What should, it, what should it feel like? Imagine what it feels like. Imagination opens the door. Imagine what it feels like for a waterfall of energy to literally come through your head and filling your body, literally filling up your body with all this healing high-frequency energy. Just imagine what it feels like. And the more that you do it, the better that you get at it. Now, how we can open up a, any chakra, okay? It's very simple. You take a finger, two fingers, right? Let's do the heart just because it's easy instead of doing this thing. So you take two fingers, you put it to the center of your chest, okay? And this is where the heart, the heart chakra is, okay? Very simply, John, all I want you to do is just bring all your attention and focus gently, all your attention and focus just to that sensation of touch there. Don't analyze it. Just recognize that sensation of touch and stay there. Now, what I want you to do gently, from inside your chest, I want you to reach out and touch your fingertips. Open your heart and touch your fingertips. And stay right there. Mm. Very, very cool. This, John, we can do this. Anyone who's got, who's more versed in some of the things that I talk about, our illnesses are always going to be related to a specific chakra. And that maybe that's another conversation we could have, by the way, start to talk about that. So if we have some kind of problem, you can even look up, okay, liver problems, what does that relate to? Or mental problems, what does that relate to? Open up that chakra that it relates to, whether it's the third eye, the throat, the heart, solar plexus, crown, it doesn't matter. Okay, use what I just showed you. It's so simple. So you do that with your crown, you do the exact same thing. And just like you felt that start to happen, this opening, this expansion, you're now fully extending and opening the chakra. That's what takes in the energy. That's how you revitalize and heal yourself. It's also how you reach enlightenment, by the way. So you do that same thing for your crown, the exact same thing that we just did. And then just imagine, a waterfall of energy coming through. It is so powerful and so tangible. When people first start doing this, you'd see their eyes. They can't believe it. It's the truth is immediate and it's tangible. Channeling intelligent energy through your crown chakra is literally one of the most effective ways that anyone can heal themselves or work on any disharmony that they have in their body. Brilliant. I, now, when, when I tell people and you know, to reprogram the subconscious, to reprogram the brain. Um, the greatest skill that they can have is recognize when they have those thought worms, you know, the, the, you know, the, the kid that's not listening, the spouse that doesn't care, you know, the work that sucks, the world that's, you know, that's when you, once you recognize that, that's when you go in and do the meditation. Yeah. And we recommend 10 minutes, three times a day, 
you may have to do it more at the start of it, but eventually it's going to be very easy. You'll be able to meditate doing it just about anything. Uh, now, now you've got a nonprofit. Okay. What's, what, what is that? And what's your latest recipient success story? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and one second, just before we go to that yeah. meditation. Okay. The magic tricks that I teach, you can maintain a perpetual state of meditation. Okay. We just don't have a frame of reference. All right. These eyes right here, pretend they're not attached to your brain. You can't think. Stay that way. And now realize that your entire life is memorized. Part of what the subconscious mind is, it's a memory bank. Even our past lives are buried within our subconscious. Every single stimuli is in our subconscious mind. Okay? What this really means is your entire life is memorized. You see a cup, here's my problem, right? You see a cup, you know how to think, you know how to drink from it. You see a chair, you know how to sit. You see your bed, you know how to lie down. You know how to wash yourself, clothe yourself, feed yourself. You know, when you get in your car, you know how to drive. You know where your stuff is in your house. Listen to what I'm saying. Your life's memorized. You've got nothing to think about. You have nothing to think about, and you never did. And I'm going to take it one step further. One step further. Okay. John, you and I are having another great conversation some of the stuff that we talk about would be considered advanced or whatever. It's not. It's part of what is. But for all intents and purposes, okay, we're having this sort of higher consciousness uh, discussion. You and I understand every word that we're saying to each other without thinking. Sit with that for a second. What this means is real understanding and real communion with one another only happens when you don't think. Okay, this is life altering for people when I start to show them you got nothing to think about your life's memorized. And if you actually want to understand something and you want to commune with someone, stop thinking that's the only time it happens. Now, people, everyone who's watching and listening, you can get a lot more comfortable with not thinking. You don't have to. And I'll let you in on another secret. That's kind of what self mastery is like. Non thought instantaneous knowingness connected to everything. This only occurs through non-thought. Perpetual presence, perpetual connectivity. That's what it looks like. Everyone can do it. Okay. Sorry for the ramble there. I'm not no, no, no. That's brilliant because honest to God, when, when I talk to people, if you're in the present, if you're in the moment, a lot of times when someone's talking, they may have said something, so you're already forming an argument or a talk or a comment or something. And while your brain is is involved in that, you're missing the the intonation, the body position, the motion, that you know all the the different ways that we communicate. The energy coming off of that person, you're missing it. So so when you say not thinking, it's it's more you're right there in that moment. Oh. Yeah. Completely. And if, and if we want to start to not yeah. get fooled by what goes on in this realm, and believe me, everything is deception here. If you want to start to be able to decode what the truth is, practice what I just said, because it's the intellect that throws you off because it's based upon your conditioned mind. Okay. The information that's presented, they already know the, what the response is going to be because your mind's already conditioned. Now, if you turn off the mind by full presence, which opens your higher mind, your intuitive wisdom will come online so strong, you will know immediately, oh, that is not true. Or, oh, oh, you know what? That is true. I can tell. I can feel it. Believe it or not, I can taste it, as weird as that sounds. But the intuitive wisdom will come online. It's easy to fool people when they're already fooling themselves. And that's what the <laughs> ego mind is, right? We have to move past this. All knowingness happens when you turn off the ego mind. So these teachings are revolutionary and they're here now because humanity absolutely needs them. And John, you and I should talk more and more about that stuff, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to keep going on. I do want to get to the nonprofit. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm saving that quote because that quote I'm using in health talk. I mean, I, it's, it's, you can fool from some of the people, some of the time, all the people, you know, some of the, yeah. it, easy to fool people when they're already fooling themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a pearl, brother. <laughs> okay, yeah. what about your nonprofit? 
Okay, so th yeah, thank you for asking about this. Okay, so my nonprofit, which I'm literally funding myself, okay? People ask me all the time, RJ, why don't you do everything for free? Do everything for free. Okay, one, if I did everything for free, no one would see any value in it, unfortunately. So I do have to charge. But actually, the main reason why I charge is because I'm able to offer scholarships to younger people that literally do not have the financial resources to avail themselves of some of my, um, um, I'll say more expensive courses, some of the more advanced uh, higher metaphysics, like the supercharged self-healing app, this uh, self-mastery course that I'm going to be teaching live at the end of July. So the nonprofit gives, gives young people access to everything that I do. And obviously it's through scholarship. It doesn't cost them anything. Now, our, our most recent recipient, and I believe I sent Kat a video of this. So uh, I'm not going to say his name, even, but so he's 20, he's 20 years old and he was in a bad car accident. Okay. And he's, he's permanently, I'm doing the air quotes again. He's permanently paralyzed uh, pretty much from the waist down, a little higher up, but pretty much from the waist down is permanently paralyzed. Okay. So he's received a scholarship through my nonprofit. The, na the name of the nonprofit is Human Advancement Through Higher Consciousness. Human Advancement Through Higher Consciousness. And the website is hathc.org, Human Advancement Through Higher Consciousness.org. Please visit it. Okay. All right. So I got him a scholarship. I interviewed him. He reached out to me. He's like, I read your book. This is incredible. Is there any way I can work with you? But he goes, I just can't afford it. I'm 20 years old. I haven't worked. I, you know, paralyzed. So I said, fill out the scholarship form and then we'll do an interview. And then I grant it to people that are hungry to get better and that literally don't have the resources, especially younger people. I have a soft spot for younger people, right? Okay. So I got him a scholarship and he started doing the, the healing technique, all the stuff that's in the book, all the stuff that's in the app, plus, plus a little bit more. So he starts doing that, right? He sent me a video and I actually sent it to Kat. He's starting to move his legs. He's literally starting to move his legs. I'm not the only one that can do this. Let's get this straight. I'm, am I different? Yeah, I'm definitely different. Inside, we're the same thing. The mechanics are the same thing. Sentience given energy. Once you learn how to access what you are and you learn how to command energy, there's nothing. There's nothing that a fully awakened human being can't do. And I mean that literally, not as a joke or some slogan. He is starting to move his legs and he sent me a video of it. So this is our latest uh, scholarship recipient. He's one of many, I have another person, another young person who uh, was on dialysis. And as you know, John, once you're on dialysis, you're on dialysis. That's just the way it is, right? The kidneys don't get better. You don't get off of dialysis. That's impossible. No, it's not. So this young it's person, not, we, we, we've gotten a lot of people up, but you've got to address it. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to do it properly. You have to do it properly. So this person no longer has dialysis, no longer has it's having the operation to remove the catheter, you know, that's inside when you it hooks up to the dialysis machine. So now she's going to have that removed because she doesn't need it. Her kidneys are actually getting better, just like this young gentleman who is now starting to move his legs, even though the doctor said, don't even bother, you're permanently paralyzed, just like they said to me. Exact same thing. Mr. Spina, get your house retrofitted. You are a paraplegic. And by the way, start taking all these medications because you have chronic disease and there's nothing you can do about it. Wrong, wrong, wrong. All of us can do this. The teachings are here now. Avail yourself of these things. I've done, I don't know how many interviews. Watch the interviews. Watch me explain these things. Get the book. If you have the funds, get the app. And by the way, if you purchase the app and you want to nominate someone for a scholarship, let me know. So when you buy one, I'm going to make a scholarship available to somebody else. And this is why I charge people. I have to charge people. Okay. So buy one and nominate somebody. This is, this is how we heal ourselves and heal each other. This is, this is the key. And John, thank you for asking about the nonprofit. It, mean, it means the world to me. Thank you for asking. Well, the, the, this, this information's got to get out to the world. I mean, you've got, you've got an upcoming four-month uh, program. Um, can, I know we're, um, Kat's going to have like a link and stuff at the bottom of this. Um, can, can you tell us about that? Yes, I can. Okay. So this four-month class, it'll be taught live weekly. So there's going to be 16 classes. Plus there's gonna be four others. It's a nice big surprise once you look at what those four other is. But it starts at the end of July and it's gonna run for four months. Now this, this course, just like Supercharged Self-Healing and the app is revolutionary, 
This is also revolutionary because it's a completely different state of consciousness. The name of the course is self-mastery, what exists beyond enlightenment. Now, for most people, enlightenment, that's the ultimate, that's, that's it, that's, that's the whole thing. What do you mean? Oh, there's a lot past enlightenment, a lot. Now, what happens is when we reach enlightenment or a, from my direct experience, when we have this bliss state and this oneness, okay, the feeling is so euphoric and there really is no self anymore. It's all one thing, okay? Now, most souls, when, when, this, does, when this does actually happen, and it does happen, right? You kind of think, well, that's it. I'm in bliss. I'm one with everything. I've done it. This is enlightenment. That's just the start. Souls don't go past that. Okay. And I'm going to discuss what exists beyond enlightenment. And on top of what exists beyond enlightenment, I'm also going to offer up the 12 laws of self-mastery. The 12 laws of self-mastery, you can think of it as the new commandments. Okay. We know what not to do. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, et cetera. Okay. Most of us know what not to do. I can't tell you, John, how many times I'm asked, RJ, what should I do? Okay. <laughs> I'm literally going to explain what we should do and why. It's not just because I said it. Who cares what RJ says? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally give us the 12 laws of self-mastery, and I'm going to explain why. It's going to put you in perfect harmony with the core functionality of the universe. So these are the things you should do and why, if you actually want to operate at your highest potential, if you actually wanna stop suffering, if you actually wanna stop with limitations, if you actually wanna stop with sickness, these 12 things are how I lead, how I lead my life, 100%. It's how I'm able to run a nonprofit, see all these people, write books, do all this kind of stuff, and how to stay fully present the whole time. It is, it's, it's called Beyond Enlightenment, it's called self-mastery, what exists beyond enlightenment. It starts July 30th. And same thing again, purchase that. It's taught live. The energetic transmission is, is, is worth it alone, just the energetic transmission. What you're going to learn is beyond what you could even possibly imagine. Purchase that, and then you can also nominate someone for a scholarship to that as well through the nonprofit. So, so think of this. If, if you think the world is not in the way a place it should be, um, remember to change the world you change yourself first and since we're more energy than matter getting connected with that awareness and that realization uh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. i mean I, you know i'll say i'll say in my videos when it's something obvious yes or yes okay uh, uh, rj buddy this has been fantastic okay we we got to get together and go sailing or something I, yeah but yeah, God this, bless you, man. This, thank, thanks, John. Yes, we will get together. It's a perfect combination in terms of what you understand and what you're working with and this bizarre stuff that I understand and what I'm working because they, they fit like this. I mean, they literally fit like this. And I think when we put both of these two things together, I think this is, this is really the key. It's not just, just the metaphysics. It has to be grounded. It has to be grounded and actionable, and it has to be practical. And that's why I like the combination of what you talk about, John, because it's actionable and practical. And I try to take, my goal is to try and take this stuff that is inaccessible for, human, for most human beings, inaccessible, access it, make it completely understandable and actionable. Because who cares if I access this stuff if you can't do anything with it? There's, there's no point in that. Real spirituality, from my perspective, real spirituality must be applicable in your moment to moment existence. Otherwise, it's useless. It's useless. Humanity needs this understanding, and that's why it's here. Please, everyone who's watching and listening, avail yourself of these teachings. Free yourself of suffering. Heal yourself. And, and help us, help everyone else heal the world. This is how it works. It, you, it begins within, and that will empower the world empower, by empowering yourself. RJ, God bless you, man. You know, I'm so glad you were injured to get you on this path. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was run over by a car or hit by a car and had my legs broken, sternum fractured. And so, you know, when God wants you on a different path, he's going to get you there. <laughs> yeah, the real, the real healers, from my perspective, the real healers have already been destroyed. Right. And, and they have learned to put themselves back together.
right? Yeah. And, 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 so, and then it's it's like, oh my gosh, I go, I know a secret. I got to tell you. <laughs> literally, yeah. And so that that's why I like the combination. I mean, you you had your body completely screwed up through that accident, and then you remembered. And it's the same thing with me. I literally, when I woke up from emergency, there's no way to say, I just remembered everything. And I used to say as a kid, if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. My last name is Spina, which means spine. Okay. Yeah, you should you should have been a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, brother. Uh, God bless you, man. And until next time, uh, thank God you're in the world. Oh, thank you so much. Same, same right back to you. And let just keep doing what you're doing, and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. And the people that are meant to get this information and meant to work on themselves, they will do it. And those that aren't ready, eventually, eventually, I promise, they will need this like a a starving man needs needs water. They will eventually come to this. All everyone eventually will come to the truth. Will come to the teachings. But there are many that are ready now, and that's why we're here. <laughs> God bless you, man. Take care, RJ. If you can hear my voice, you are part of the resistance.